everyone thank you for joining me i am so happy that you clicked on this video um i am going to give a book review on the golden couple by greer hendrix and sarah mckinnon i know i probably botched sarah's last name i am so sorry but this is the cover of the book interesting so let's go ahead and get into this, okay? Um, the story centers around Avery and the bishops. Avery is a therapist that lost her license due to an unorthodox line of treatment, okay? And making her own rules of how to assist her clients. Her methods have gotten her into predicaments that pose a threat to her well-being and livelihood. Avery has adopted a 10 session method of treatment that Marissa Bishop has sought out. Marissa is the mother to son Bennett and wife to Matthew. Their lives are picture perfect when one is looking in from the outside. They are Instagram worthy in regards to their appearance, lifestyle, and wealth. Marissa owns a high-end boutique and Matthew is a partner at a law firm. They are educated and pleasing to the eye, living in a good neighborhood. Bennett attends a private school and they have a gorgeous home. However, with all these positives, they have issues. Right out the gate in this story, Marissa has broken her marriage vows and cheated. I would not call it an affair because it was supposedly a one-time uh, incident. So, it's che she cheated one time. This caused a cluster storm in the lives of these three people. Some side characters to mention that are tangled in this spider web of deceit and mystery is Polly. Polly is the overeager employee at Marissa's boutique. Kind of irritating if you ask me. She's... The author made Polly so clingy and irritating and <laughs> you wonder what is she hiding and why? Then there is Natalie, the classy realtor that used to date Matthew. Natalie is along the lines of a mean girl and too darn flirty. You wonder if Natalie is attempting to break up this seemingly happy home? Then there is Skip, the guy Avery has hung out with a couple of times. Skip is a bit off and Avery just can't confirm what his deal is. You'll have to read the book to see how all of these characters are intertwined into the thriller web. The clock is ticking for all of them and you will have to read the book to find out which bombs go off and why. Will Marissa and Matthew be able to repair their relationship after this betrayal? Find out what plight Avery has and if she is able to get it sorted out or not. The author was exceptional in keeping you on your toes. When you think you figured it out, BAM! There's another twist that has you rethinking your analysis of the situation. The sketchy happenings will have you ping pong between the characters, trying to decipher the outcome. I didn't see it coming until it was too late. It was like a, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I couldn't put the book down. I stayed up way past my bedtime to finish it because I was that hooked. I was like, what in the world is going on? And so 
I think you will definitely enjoy it if you're if you're looking for something that will have you contemplating like what in the world's going on and then it's like oh. so there are some triggers that should be mentioned there is death and violence described in adequate detail um, the area of cheating which is the catalyst of this story um, some of the characters' behaviors may put you at unease. Pause for the calls. When reading this book, I had a few thoughts, though. Um, one was, I wonder if therapists and, you know, parallel fields find themselves blocked from doing the work needed for the clients because of ethics and boundaries set by the respective license boards, etc., like, I wonder how much more effective they could be if they provided some out-of-the-box assistance, like beyond the therapy room, sitting on the couch, you know, deciphering and talking about the issues. Like, if they could go a little bit further beyond that, you know, to really help their clients in more depth. And then, on the flip side, though, I thought it could get a little dangerous and have some unforeseen ramifications, <laughs> just like in this book. Um, so it's kind of a catch-22. You kind of want that therapist or counselor or par parallel fields to kind of go a little bit further, just to, like help me just a little bit more than what you're doing, because, you know, just sitting here talking about it, <laughs> it's not always... As helpful it's like kind of go a little bit can, can you come with me can you come with me go, go a little bit beyond me just sitting on the couch telling you what happened and then you say oh what did you think of this or oh did you see it this way or oh how did that make you feel like can we can we go beyond that just beyond that a little bit um, but like I said, on the flip side, that can get a little blurry, <laughs> like it did in this book. Well, it didn't get blurry, it just got crossed. <laughs> Another thought that I had was that men don't, they don't take cheating as well when it's done to them. Um... And I, I think that's for... I don't know. I, I don't know. They don't take it so well when it happens to them. Now, they can go and be community property, but... <laughs> it's very different <clears throat> when the woman walks out and becomes community property. <laughs> oh, so, um, yes, men, men don't take it as well. Um, but women are expected to, you know, handle it in a, in a better way and, uh, we're expected to give a clean slate and, and have complete forgiveness. No, forgetfulness. Cause we, we're supposed to just forget it ever happened. <laughs> we want to, they want to make us bypass forgiveness and just completely forget about it. Like it never happened. But men... Most often times, cannot do the same. Um, <clears throat> but moving on. Um, another thought was, <laughs> you never know who was watching your every move. And that can be a very scary thought. Having someone possibly watching your every move. Um, and it depends on why they're watching you. You know, I mean, some people do watch you because, you know, especially if you're good, like a good person and you've accomplished things in your life and, um, you know, they kind of wonder, well, well, how did they do that? Let me, let me look and, and observe and, and that's okay. But then there's those people that are, are, uh, the stalkers, um, of those uh, people that have ill intent, uh, it's kind of scary. <clears throat> and 
And then lastly, ask questions. Don't assume, don't overthink, don't overanalyze anything until you ask the hard questions. Um, too much energy is wasted when you can just ask. Just ask. Um, then depending on the answer, then you can go into all of the analyzing and assessing and, you know, you know, maneuvering and act accordingly. But a lot of <clears throat> things can be avoided if you just ask the question. You oftentimes go in a mind loop, just wonder, 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 and scenario, 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 and what if, and uh, just ask. Just ask. So, um, those are some things that came up while I'm reading this book. Just some thoughts. Um, I'm pretty sure you will have your own thoughts when you're reading this book. And some topics of discussion could obviously be cheating. Where do you draw the line? Um, I've heard some, some different things. There, you know, there's emotional cheating. Um, there's physical cheating. Um, I even heard a new one now, financial cheating. I was like, what? Financial cheating? I was like, what is that? <laughs> and the, the answer that I got was, <clears throat> financial cheating is where one takes finances, income, from their relationship and gives to uh, someone else <clears throat> without their partner's you know knowledge they are financially cheating they're they're giving it to their their ex or some other person that they have an interest in or like in or whatever or, and without their partner's knowledge so basically you know you're, you're taking from your relationship in a financial way <clears throat> i had never heard of that before but i could see it i could see it you know some chick you used to converse with calls you up and it's like oh I'm having a hard time <laughs> and then your your uh cash happened <laughs> oh or vice versa I I mean it could be the chick too chick giving money to to some some guy I had not heard of that until recently I was like whoa Okay, now we've heard the emotional cheating, <clears throat> you know, talking to other people in a more intimate way, uh, divulging in intimate information, having those um, uh, intimate conversations, and, and getting attached emotionally uh, to somebody else other than your partner. And then we have all know the physical cheating. But! What do you consider cheating? I guess that's that's the question. What do you consider cheating? Hmm. Okay. Um. And then another topic of discussion could be: um, Can you truly forgive and forget a betrayal? I think I said that earlier. That sometimes you know the cheater just wants you to forget about it, like it never happened. They want you to bypass the forgiveness. They want the forgiveness, but they want you to go a little bit further and forget that it happened. Mm. Can you truly do that? Can a relationship return as it once was after a betrayal has been committed? I don't think your relationship will be the same. But I don't know. <laughs> That's a topic for a discussion. Um, another topic could be, would you want a therapist slash counselor and the like to be like Avery in this book? 
Because she is very unorthodox. She, she goes beyond the realm of what we traditionally think of in terms of a person going for therapy or counseling. She goes, she goes the extra mile. I don't know. Hmm. Um, do you believe in counseling? Why or why not? Is your life on display for social media the real you or just a facade to get likes and attention? How much energy does it take to keep up the fake image you want people to believe? Well, uh, those are some juicy topics <laughs> to get you started. Um, after you read this book, you might find some more topics. Um, for a good conversation uh, read the book uh, I say read the book and come up with some of your own discussion questions because there can be midnight um, the book is moderate to fast paced I was definitely turning the pages there were several high points in the story that will have you at the edge of your seat um, the author takes you on a roller coaster for sure and you're gonna be twisting and turning and like what 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 um so i give the book a 10 out of 10 and if you have read the book tell me your thoughts i want to know what you think about this book what you got from it um what's your takeaway um how you feel about the characters and definitely how you feel about um avery's course of action um if you haven't read the book go get it and dive into it it's good I liked it um, if you would take a moment to hit the subscribe button like share uh, tell a friend come on over and take a gander at the videos I would appreciate that okay I really do I appreciate the likes I appreciate the comments um, I definitely appreciate the views um, so I have uh, definitely enjoyed this experience and I definitely enjoy hearing from you, the viewers, okay? So uh, I appreciate you tuning in and until next time, keep turning the pages, my book lovers.